How do y'all move lax lives? I think it's time to play a little Seven Days to Die. Uh, all right, so doing a little painting. I painted over the concrete here to make it look like the wood. Uh, painted some blue in for the floor there. Um, just, you know, I wanted to spruce it up a little bit. I went and got some lead uh, because I want to make some windows. And I need to make glass blocks. And glass blocks are sand, lead, and clay. Uh, so let's count how many of these I need. It's four per window that I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. So I need 28 glass blocks. Uh, can I have 28 Eight. I have enough to make eight glass blocks. What am I missing? Sand. Okay. I'm going to need more sand, apparently. Do I have sand in here? Wow, I am surprised I do not have sand in there. I guess I've been using it to make concrete... Um, so, uh, we did play some D&D &D tonight, and, uh, it's the, it's the sessions that I run that we played tonight. So we had, uh, uh, or they, I guess, they had made it to, um, this place called Gardong Marhold, um, which, uh, Uh, which was the hideout for a gang of people and monsters called the Black Skull Gang who are working with the Necromancer um, by funneling prisoners to him to use in his experiments. And so um, they... Uh, they had already uh, killed most of them, but also, um, I need to count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need uh, 90 nails. I wonder if I just have nails. They're not expensive. I don't see 90 nails. Nope, no nails. Uh, and uh, so they had uh, basically cleared the first floor. They talked to the leader. They let her go uh, for some inf in exchange for some information. And uh, so they, they worked their way into the last room. And they ran into um, this half-ogre dude. And uh, they didn't check really ahead of time. Uh, instead, uh, so it's... <sighs> The one dude, and this is... Oh, look, I should have painted this up here, too. Uh, the one dude, he uh, he is so scared. It's like, a, it's like a visible fight with him. He's so scared that his guy will take damage that he won't play like you would expect his character to play. And then, uh, on the opposite side of that, he's so greedy... That he also wants to be everywhere first to make sure he gets the loot. <laughs> right? And uh, so tonight, uh, tonight that was in full swing. Uh, and so they come up to this door, right? It's not, a, it's not even a door. It's a, it's a, um, A heavy tapestry and he wants to inspect it for traps and so one of the things he sees is that it, there's a wire running through it 
And, uh, well, he doesn't know what to do with that. He wants to know what the wire does. And I'm like, well, I mean, you can't, you can't tell from where you're at. Uh, it clearly runs through to the inside. And what it is, is it's a wire that, uh, it's a trap, but the wire is inside the room, but it runs through the canvas. And so if you try to enter the room while the trap is sprung, the canvas falls. And uh, there's a bunch of pots and pans hooked to it as well, so it makes a bunch of noise. And then you're tied up in the canvas for one of your turns, basically. Um, and so uh, he's trying to get around interacting with it like can i see what's on the other side i'm like no it's it's sealed pretty tight because that's the whole point of it and um and, you know and so he uh finally uh they have this golem that was wandering around with them and he's like can we just send the golem through it and the guy's like well the other guy's like i'll try and so he commands it in dwarvish to uh, enter the room, and so it does. It goes through the room, which causes the canvas to fall on it, which knocks it down. And uh, and then uh, he immediately, the guy who wouldn't interact with it, um, wants to be in the room first because he's afraid there's treasure in there. And so he's like, you know, I go, I go to the door to look in the room. Well, the bad guy is standing there, and they've sprung his alert trap, and so he swings at the 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 rogue, and uh, and so I can't hit anything with this guy. I I think he took four swings and missed every time, and um, he took one swing to start, one swing on that turn. I he took three swings, and then uh, he threw down his axe and surrendered, and then they killed him after he surrendered. Uh, and, uh, okay, I know that showed a hammer, but can I just make the windows? Yes. Uh-oh. I don't have wood. I gotta get more wood. And, uh, and so, yeah, so they killed him, uh, after they talked to him and he didn't have any information they wanted. Uh, and they, they're like... Uh, we're here to kill all the all the black skulls, so we're just going to kill him. And I'm like, but you let the leader go last week. And they're like, oh yeah, we did do that. And we're just going to kill him. Uh, I'm like, all right, well, I mean, there's five turns between him and him again. So, I mean, there's no way you guys aren't going to do 21 points of damage to him. Uh, so, we'll just say he's dead. And... Um, well, the guy hadn't been listening to me all night, the the rogue. Uh, we started off the night, and I described the hallway, how the hallway ended with, uh, on the one side was a wall of mud that was leaking down into the room because the some of the hallways are just crammed full of mud. And so at the end of the hallway, you can see the mud oozing out on the map. And he's like, is that a doorway? Uh, I'm like, nope, that's the mud. Uh, well, I mean, can I move the mud and, and open the doorway? I'm like, it's not a doorway, it's a hallway full of mud. We already discussed this. You were here. Uh, you were talking. Uh, and, uh, and so, um, yeah, then, uh, Oh, and then I said that uh, the, the guy wasn't going to survive that many attacks, and so he's dead. Um, they've killed him. And uh, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to take my turn. I'm like, what do you mean? He's dead. Uh, so this is what I rolled, and this is what I rolled. Uh, do both of those hit? And like, he's dead. Well, this is the damage that I would have done. He's dead. We don't need you to take your turn. That was the whole he's dead thing. Uh, and, uh, so he's like, what do you mean he's dead? I'm like, yeah, he's dead. He was almost dead when he surrendered. You guys weren't going to take a surrender. He's not going to survive five rounds of combat or five turns of combat before it's his turn. 
Um, the dice would have to go really, really bad for at least two of you not to hit him. I mean, I guess it could have happened, but, I mean, what's he going to do? He's already surrendering. And so... Uh, okay, I want to get these windows in, I guess, before I start putting in... I guess I'll put my chest down here. Um, and so, uh, so then, uh, we go to the second floor and the second floor they had been told, um, was, uh, they had been told was, uh, had been searched or they were in the process of searching because there were magic artifacts on the second floor. Uh oh. How did I miscount that? One, two, three, four, five, seven. Oh, there are eight. There are eight, buddy. I need four more glass blocks here. And, uh... So we've been so careful on the floor below, and so we get to the second floor, and the second floor is the treasure floor, uh, and it's heavily trapped. Um, it's not, it's not unbelievably dangerous, but it is dangerous if you're not careful. <laughs> and so, um, the very first thing you run into are these things called gelatinous cubes. Um, now they're they're mildly dangerous. They're not they're not super dangerous necessarily. Um, uh, and so the uh, all right. So I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm going to get my paints, I guess, and paint these. And so, um, the thing is, though, is that they're clear. And so you have to be looking, basically, to see them. And he doesn't look. He just says, I run into the hallway and start looking for traps. And so I'm like, oh, we can't move that far. And I move him back. And then he moves himself back. And then I move him back. And then he moves himself back. And I'm like, stop moving your character. Uh, and then he moves himself back. And I'm like... <clears throat> and one of the other guys laughs because... You know. Uh, I don't remember what I put in there for the bottom one. Uh, okay, just a... Regular... Cabinet to hold stuff. Uh, and then next to that, I believe, was my, my food. Uh, and then we'll do weapons next. And then last off, we'll do um, mods and stuff, which I used uh, these cabinets here for all the parts. And then we'll use this one for the, the others. All right. Oh, I need to get some lights in here as well. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I've got some lights. Yep. 
for light bulbs. Uh, I should probably make a switch as well. Um, I mean, I, uh, it's just on, on, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, how big is this place? One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So if we do one, two, three, four, we'll come down here and do one, two, three, four. I feel like that's probably enough light. Uh, let me get my yes, that is that's plenty of light in here. Woof. All right, uh, so let's see. I'm gonna take this stuff out and then I'm gonna rearrange the supplies I do have. Um, Oh, I still have the paint in here, too. Why do I have so much stew on me? Uh, all right, there we go. And um, so he basically just ran face first into the thing, uh, which I was kind of surprised by. Uh, and uh, and so then we fought. It it wasn't a great fight. I'm not gonna lie. I failed a lot of rolls with those guys with the gelatinous cubes. Um, I managed to. Uh, they do a thing where they engulf you, and then uh, you take a lot of poison damage or not poison damage, acid damage from them. Uh, on their turn, but um, with uh, the narrowness of the hallway, I couldn't get more than one of them engaged at a time. And um, and so uh, it wasn't a hard fight. They, they didn't take any damage. Uh, one of the issues uh, with the damage is that the, uh, they have this class called the Artificer, and one of the classes is called an artillerist. And, uh, and so uh, basically, basically the guy who uh, DMs on the other nights, he took uh, classes that he felt would um, give him an edge over the game. Uh, not, not a let's me play the game kind of edge, but... Uh, uh, this is a way to screw with the way D and D works, kind of thing. He's done it before. Um, uh, he uh, he played a wizard once that uh, allows you to change roles after they happen, and uh, and then proceeded to only use that on his turn for himself, and pretty much I think one time used it to help somebody else. Um, and, uh, so the two characters he's got this time, one is this artificer because the, at low levels, it's got this ability where you generate temporary hit points every turn with it. Uh, and so it's so many temporary hit points at low level that even damage you take most of the time won't matter 
uh, because you've got so many temporary hit points that it just blocks it. And so, um, so that's his artificer. But then he also took this uh, this rogue that um, has an ability so that if it fails a roll of a certain kind, um, it can automatically uh, roll an extra dice, I think, or maybe re-roll it. I don't know. Uh, he only tried to use it um, in a way that I didn't allow him to. I... It was a rule that I had to change. It it was broken as is. Um, it uh, uh, if you make a check of a certain kind, then if you fail it, you're supposed to be allowed to roll again. And uh, and so if you do fail it, then you use up one of your temporary resources. I don't have a problem with the ability itself. Um, but some things are hidden from the players. And so, like, if he wanted it so that if he made a perception check against... You know what? Some of this stuff is completed items and shouldn't be in there. Uh, he wanted it so that if he made a perception check to see if there were hidden people around... Um, that uh, even if he failed finding them, he would um, he would know. Or if he rolled a stealth check to hide from people, uh, he would know if he failed. And then that way, um, he wouldn't do the action that... Um, I think this actually goes up here. Uh, he wouldn't do the action that he was going to do because he knew that he would be seen, right? That's why he wanted it, so that he could get around roles that don't necessarily alert you to whether or not you've succeeded or failed. And uh, and so I, I couldn't have that. It just, it's not, it's not how the game should work. And so... Um, I didn't take the ability away. I just said that he had to tell me whether or not he wanted to risk losing a dice uh, before he rolled uh, or after he rolled. I didn't care, but I wasn't going to tell him whether or not he failed. He had to decide whether or not it was important enough for him to do that because to me, it's an ability that he activates so he should know whether or not he's doing it and it shouldn't be just something that happens on a whim, you know? And, uh, so after, after we came to that, well, after I said that was the way it was going to work, um, he never tried to use it again. He only wanted it so that it would alert him if he failed a, a check that was going to reveal him or not. He didn't care how the ability worked or any of that. Just, whether or not he could use it to, to get past rolls like that. So, um, so yeah, so those were his two characters. And, uh, so, um, he just, he just kept running, moving his guy right into this slime cube, you know, gelatinous cube guy. Um, they fought the gelatinous cubes. They took him down pretty easily. And, uh, uh, now what's funny is he wanted to check for traps and then after they killed the two gelatinous cubes that he ran into when he moved his guy into the hallway, um, he didn't check for traps. Uh, and so he, uh, uh, the doors aren't necessarily locked. They're just closed. And so when they opened the door, I described that, uh, now they know that this floor is a treasure floor, and uh, and so they just fought these two gelatinous cubes, and so he decides that um, there's nothing in there. He decides that um, 
he is going to uh, open the door on the one side. Like, they didn't even just get to discuss. He just like, I am opening this other door here. And, uh, and like, okay. And so then he goes in and uh, I tell him that in the middle of the room is a big um, metal thing. Uh, I forget how the how it was described. Um, a big metal rack uh, that holds ten gleaming long swords. And so he's like, "I moved to check the long swords." And uh, and so. Uh, they're a trap, and they spring and attack him and knock him unconscious. Uh, which uh, uh, you know, which I was not gonna lie, a little happy with. Uh, all right, I need a workbench. So I need forged iron, mechanical parts, a wrench. Uh, claw hammer and wood. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to have to make the claw hammer. Uh, okay, let's see. Iron. Mechanical parts. I've got the wood. Uh, there's the wrench. Yeah, I do not have a claw hammer. Claw, hammer, uh, leather, and duct tape. Okay. And so um, they spring up around him, and he is surrounded. And, uh, and so there's ten of them, and the room will only hold nine things. So I had to put two of them out in the hallway with the other players. And, and then we rolled for combat. And so... Um, they knocked him unconscious, uh, almost immediately, uh, leather. And so now he's, he's unconscious and he is not happy. Uh, uh, and so he's trying to figure out how to, how to get around, uh, Oh man, what am I missing for the workbench? Forged iron. And uh, they can't get in the room where his body is laying in the middle of the room because he ran in ahead by himself to check if it was treasure and it wasn't treasure. He didn't check for traps or nothing. He just like, I run up to check these long swords. And, uh, and so, yeah, they knocked him out and then, uh, nobody could hit anything. My swords couldn't hit them. They couldn't hit my swords. Um, and eventually they did get in there, but, uh, on your turn, if you have zero hit points, you have to roll a death save. Uh, and so what happens is you have to roll a d20. And if you get a 10 or higher, you succeed. If you get a 9 or lower, you fail. Uh, so it's first death save, fail. Second death save, succeed. Third death save, succeed. Fourth death save, fail. So we get to the fifth turn, and they are scrambling, trying to figure out how to get in there to him. So the problem is, is they they have a guy, his artificer, is a healer, but he was depending on he was depending on the um, the temporary hit points from his little mech cannon to keep everybody alive. And so he did not have the ranged heal spell, heal spell memorized. That word came out weird in my mouth. And, 
Uh, all right, what about a campfire? I have one of those. What about a forge? I need clay soil and short iron pipes. Short iron pipes. And I'll have to go get some clay soil. And so, uh, because there was no way to range heal to him, uh, he rolls his death save, and he rolls a five. And so that's three failed death saves. He's dead. Uh, but we use a system called Hero Points. Uh, there's this whole inspiration thing I don't like. Um, I don't think it's fair. And so I have replaced inspiration with hero points. Um, I, I think it's a... We might have too many hero points, but I think it's a better system. Um, I, I don't like the inspiration system because it's, it's DM's whim. And... Uh, So it's just like, this is something that pleased me as the DM, so I will reward you as a player. Um, whereas someone could just be playing the game, you know, and doing their job and, and you know, never do something that makes the DM giddy and never gets inspiration. Whereas somebody else who's, you know, more entertaining as a person... Is just always getting inspiration. I've I've felt it as a player. I have you know watched other people get uh, inspiration after inspiration because my character was just a champion fighter, you know, and and never seemed to uh, hit that sweet spot for our DM that gave me a lot of inspiration. I mean, I got a couple. I'm not saying I never got any. But there were other people who were getting them all the time. And I've, I've watched other people play D&D. And it's just some people will do things that really tickle the DM. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, here, have some inspiration. And I'm like, you know, I don't like that system. And so um, I uh, tweaked. Well, I didn't know Hero Points was a thing. I kind of worked out a system in my head. And then I saw it was actually a thing. And then um, uh, I felt like they give too many inspiration points. And so I, I tweaked that down some. Uh, and so basically what it does is let you re-roll your dice uh, when you, you use up a hero point. And you, uh, they only reset when you level up. Um, so like at level one, I think you have one. Uh, I run it uh, one and a half times... Uh, one and a half times your level rounded down, I think. Uh, so level one, you get one. At level two, you get two. Uh, at level three, you'd get uh, three. All right. Uh, I don't know, you get four, because it'd be one and a half times your level. Uh, and then at level four, it would be four plus two, so you get six, that kind of thing. Um, and so uh, he uses a hero point, right? Because he failed his death save with a five. He rolls a one. Uh, and it's such a low-level campaign that there's nobody around that can res him. Uh, and... I just... I think his character's dead. Uh, I think that's just how it's going to work out, is his character has died. All right, so um, I think the workbench will go here. Uh, do I want it here? I want it down here a little bit. Ooh, maybe I put it this way. I kind of like that. Separate the the bed from everything else a little bit here. Although I wouldn't want it right up against the wall. Um, 
Yeah, because then I can put my cooking down there. Uh, you know, let's do this. That's where my my bench goes. Uh, what about a cement mixer? I need springs and an engine. And uh, so, yeah, so tonight, tonight I killed my first, pl well, I mean, he rolled it, so I didn't kill him, but I knocked my first player unconscious who failed all their death saves. Uh, and uh, so then they wanted to know if they would be able to re-roll a new character, and I'm like, well, technically, I feel like, uh, oh, I forgot the springs. I feel like the campaign is made for four people, and we had five because my we had somebody join in uh, after we had started, and so I think we'll just take her back down to four people because they've been having a pretty easy time walking through this thing uh, with the oh what am I what am I missing now? Oh, I don't have enough forged iron. And, um, okay, and then I need, uh, chemistry station. Uh, got a beaker, probably don't want to use the beaker I got on me, though. I need three cooking pots. Let me check. I might have some cooking pots. I definitely have the beaker. Beaker. Uh, I do not have the cooking pots. Okay. And I need some acid. Uh, but so they finished that room, and, um... What did I say I needed? Cooking pots. And, uh... So now they've just got to, um... figure out how to uh, how to get through <laughs> the uh, the door to the treasury and there's two other rooms on the other side of uh, the map they're on that uh, are also big traps so we'll see how things turn out for them because it is uh, it is not not an easy haul. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I should iron this up or just iron this up. Uh, and I don't, I don't think I can do anything to pick these up. You just get parts back. If you manage to push the right button, uh, unlike me, so. Okay. Get that out of there, and then you also can come up out of here. Well, I think this is where I'm going to call it. Uh, next week we'll be back to uh, probably his D&D &D, uh, where we're crawling through the dungeon. So we'll see how that goes. He, We'll see how salty he is over losing a character. Because um, he has yet to manage to do that to our characters. Um, I didn't... I don't want his character to die. You know, I, I wasn't going out of my way to make it happen. Uh, it just did happen. Um, and he just managed to separate himself from the party and spring a trap. Um, and I didn't know they didn't have heals that they could do from a distance. Uh, I mean... I. I don't cast heals on my bard, but I have them learned in case we need them. Uh, so. 
I don't know why you, uh... Why you wouldn't... Oh, there's too many. Whew, that's gonna be a... That's gonna be a trek and a half there to get all that stuff out. Uh, so... Uh, we've got the forge here. Um, I'm going to put that there. Uh, I'm going to put the campfire over here. I should probably have moved the food over here, all right? Uh, and then we'll get the cement mixer and the chemistry station over here as well. And then I'll have a nice little, uh, nice little place to do my my workshop stuff in. So, all right. With that, be running small things, leading the light, and I will talk to you later.